Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. You know, there are some challenges managing crops like corn, but when you're going to go conventional corn and walk away from GMO traits, it does change the landscape a little bit. Now that doesn't mean you're not gonna get high yields. We're gonna talk about what it's going to take to maintain high yields and profitability in conventional corn. Well, Darren, I will say, I hate the term GMO. Why do we not call it biotech? That's what it is. It's an advancement in technology. But yes, if you wanna step back in technology, you can certainly do that. We're gonna talk through that management. We're also gonna talk about how do you fix a saline soil? If you have saline issues on your farm, you know it's killing you on yield and profitability, but we'll talk about how to fix that today. We've also got a Weed of the Week coming up later in the show and Iron Talk, but first, here's this week's Farm Basics. These days, it can be hard to make the math work in your soybean fields. With the Liberty Link system with Liberty Herbicide, it gets easier. A two plus bushel per acre advantage over Asgro Roundup ready to extend soybeans means at least $18 more an acre for you. Plus, lower system input costs and more complete weed control all adds up to at least $33 more an acre for your farm. That's smart math. Grow smart with BASF. It's that time of the year where a lot of the chemical programs for 2019 are being put into place for farmers to control tough weeds like our Weed of the Week that we'll talk about a little later in our show. But one of the things that farmers are really concerned about is weed resistance. And you read a lot about this in newspapers and farm magazines. You may be wondering, what are we doing about weed resistance on the farm level? One of the big challenges that farmers will, will have is, well, I want to use multiple modes of action. So products, crop protection products from different chemical families to try to avoid this resistance Well, problem. the only reason Darren says that's a challenge is sometimes it's very confusing and in the advertising that comes out from the big companies, they don't necessarily tell you which specific mode of action it is. So to make things very simple, we have an Ag PhD mode of action app that farmers across the country are now able to use. It's really nice because farmers can pick products that they're using and it will tell which modes of action they are. And then you can put together a whole program and say, well, if I use this product soil applied and this product foliar later on, how many different modes of action am I getting? And are those modes of action effective on my worst weeds? Yeah. Yeah, the reason why Darren and I are never all that worried about weed resistance is because we have so many different options to control weeds. And if a farmer goes out there with three different effective modes of action every single year on every weed, we aren't going to have a problem. So you hear about these super weeds and you may be thinking, wow, I don't know what farmers are going to do. It sounds like the world's going to come to an end out on the farm in a couple of years here because the weeds are just going to take over. Rest assured, there are lots of different choices that farmers have to try and control these weeds when it comes to herbicides and certainly cultural practices and tillage and crop rotation, all those things come into play as well. Well, whether you're a farmer or a non-farmer, we'd encourage you to check out the free Ag PhD Mode of Action app just so you can see all the different modes of action that there actually are are out there for herbicides. We'll help you pick out some great choices to control our Weed of the Week coming up later in the show. How can you cut farm expenses in 2019 and still yield well? Which input expenses are just that, expenses? And which inputs will give you great weed, insect, and disease control and give you a great return on your investment? These are big questions this season and we'll answer them at the free Ag PhD 101 Ways to Cut Farm Expenses workshops. We'll take a close look at every kind of farm expense. So if saving money is important to you, come to Ag PhD's 101 Ways to Cut Farm Expenses workshops. Registration is now open at agphd.com. At Estes Performance Concaves, we know how valuable your time is at harvest. That's why we designed the new XPR Concave System. The XPR System is the number one performance concave system on the market, surpassing the rest in both speed and efficiency, ensuring every last grain from your field gets into your tank. Plus, XPR Concaves work for all row crops. No more changing concaves, meaning you have less downtime. Take back your bushels this harvest. Get Estes Performance Concaves in your combine today. Tired of that old warped poly boom ruining your spray applications? Express Boom from Hypro is a fully assembled stainless steel boom that ensures an even application of chemicals every time. Don't wait another season. Upgrade today. Hypro, helping you spray better. Out here, great yield starts with great weed control. 
That's why I choose the Roundup Ready Extend crop system. The system that makes the difference. Because only I know what it takes out here. Yields what it's all for. But keeping my fields clean all season, that's what it's all about. This is my field. Farmers across the country have put their confidence in the Roundup Ready Extend crop system. These are their experiences. The RR2X soybeans have really met our yield expectations. We used to be 45 to 50 bushels. Now we're setting a bar at 60, 70 bushels. We sprayed our field correctly, and we're keeping that money in the field. In 2019, we definitely will be 100% Roundup Ready to extend soybeans. Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. I love talking about saline soils. Not that I like saline soils, but I like talking about this issue because it absolutely can be fixed. Now, the only question here is, how much are you going to spend and how long is it going to take to get the return that you're looking for? But we're gonna to talk today about how you fix saline soils once and for all. Brian, let's start by defining saline soils because there are a lot of issues that happen out there and sometimes we get soil tests from a farmer that says, well, I've got a high level of sodium and they say, I've got a saline soil. Let's not get confused here. When we've got a really high level of sodium, like 10% base saturation or higher, we've got a sodic soil. With saline soils, we've got a high level of soluble salts. So it's a little bit different problem uh, but the fix is pretty clear. The reason why the fix is clear is because of the, the words that Darren just used, soluble salts. Well, if it's soluble, what does that mean? That means in water, it's gonna flush out of your soil if you have good drainage. That's the whole key here. You have to have good drainage. If today you've got a saline issue, it's most likely because you don't have tile in the field or because you don't have enough calcium in your soil either. So those are the main two things that we need to talk about. All right, when it comes to drainage, some farmers will say, well, wait a minute now, saline soils, the parent material in my soil has a big part to do with this. And if the soil was meant to drain, it probably should drain. Hold on, just stop right there. We've got a problem here that didn't happen overnight. This is something that's gradually built up in your field and gotten worse and worse. And as this problem progresses, it inhibits your plants from even pulling water up out of the soil. So eventually you're gonna have issues with anything growing in those parts of the field. You don't want that and that's not how nature was intended to be in this part of the field. We've got an issue with drainage. For one reason or another, this part of the field is not drained well and we can fix it and we can improve the environment. This isn't a negative thing. Sometimes I'll hear farmers say, well, this is a negative. If I'm flushing salts out, well, I've got salt that's gonna head down the river. Yeah, a little bit of salt for a short period of time. And after that, you've got clean, clean water. Well, Darren, hold up just a second there. Clean, clean water can have a lot of salt. Think about how much salt you put on your food every day. There's way less than that that's gonna go out of your field in terms of actual pounds per gallon of water. So here's where I'm going with this thing. We've gotta make sure that we're not just talking about surface drainage here. If you wanna fix a saline soil, the problem is below ground. The problem is you don't have drain tile in that field. So you've gotta look though at how much drain tile do you need. If you've got really heavy ground, that basically means you're gonna to have to have more drain tile spaced at a little closer spacing. So that's the first thing. Then you also want to take a look at, hey, are all these salts soluble today? Well, like Darren said, okay, sodium, if it was just a sodium deal, we'd have to turn that to a salt. Well, again, with saline, it is soluble. So we're not too worried about it. It should flush out of your soil pretty well. If you look then at your calcium levels, if you find your calcium levels below 60, below 65% on a base saturation test, then yes, you're most likely gonna need some more calcium out there, probably in the form of gypsum would be our recommendation, but you may be able to use lime as well. With calcium, it's a fairly large molecule and it helps with porosity in the soil. It also helps that soil just have a little more airspace and it allows more natural drainage too. So if you've got more space in between those soil particles, you've got a little more room for things to move through more quickly. The last thing that I'll throw out here is, 
if you want to get some high carbon residue in the field in those bad, bad spots that are saline, you certainly could take some bales, some straw bales, hay bales, something like that, and, in, and till them into the ground to help you out a little bit in the short term. But the number one thing, again, that you've got to do is get some drain tile out there. You may need to add some more calcium. And yes, certainly you could throw some high carbon residue out as well. But do those things and you're going to fix this problem. It's not going to change 100% overnight, but you're going to find in a very short amount of time you're going to be able to raise crop there. And eventually you're going to be able to raise amazing crop there. Like so many things in agriculture, fixing a saline soil just requires you to do the next best thing that you can do. The next decision, make the right one. The same thing is true with our Weed of the Week. Make the next decision the right one. We'll show you what some of those right decisions are coming up later in the show. What do the top growers in the world have in common? If you had some insight into their strategies, would that help guide you moving forward? I'm Darren Hefty with Ag PhD. On Tuesday, February 19th, we'll be holding a free Secrets of High Yield Fields workshop on our farm near Baltic, South Dakota. We'll show you soil tests from some of the highest yielding fields in the world, compare them to farm averages in your area, and discuss which strategies will benefit you most. Attend the Ag PhD Secrets of High Yield Fields workshop. Register today at agphd.com. Let's take a look at our picks for the championship season. We've got 10340. No, no, no. I don't want to talk about them. I want to talk about this agro liquid team. Take a look at this lineup. They got it all. The talent, their players can meet any challenge on any field. The coaching staff, the best I've seen. So that's your pick? No discussions? Nope. Agro liquid is the team. They're going all the way to the championship. <laughs> There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We count it. Why? Because we designed the TigerMate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry and target a nickel size area to plant a seed and never miss, you'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on, Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt and a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. Our next subject is conventional corn. How do you manage it for maximum yields and profitability? Well, the first thing you have to think about here is weed control. That's what I am most worried about in conventional corn. When Roundup corn came out, or for that matter, even Liberty corn, it made it real easy because we had a grass rescue. One of the nice things, or maybe one of the bad things, is I've been an agronomist for a really long time now. And I just remember back when conventional corn wasn't called conventional corn, it was just called corn. So before those days of Roundup and Liberty, we used to have to manage this corn, or what we now call conventional corn, without these other herbicide options. So what we did is we made sure that we had a great pre-emerge herbicide out there. That was the whole key. If you had a great pre, you could follow with something post-emerge to clean everything else up, and you were in pretty good shape. The biggest thing that you lose, though, and the biggest thing that we gained when we went to Roundup and Liberty Corn was the rescue on grass. Grass is the number one weed problem in conventional corn, and for that matter, I'd say it's the number two problem and the number three problem. You have to get grass under control. It is the biggest yield robber in corn, period. Let's talk about that grass control a little bit more. It's certainly going to start with a good pre-emerge herbicide. And here's one of the challenges over the last 10 or 15 years, we've switched away from using a full rate of a grass pre-emerge and gone to a cut rate of a grass pre-emerge mixed 
with a partial rate of a broadleaf herbicide. It's been nice in Roundup Ready crops, for example, where Roundup is going to come back and take care of any volunteers and escapes. But when you look at grass control, it's gone backwards. So we need to get back to that full rate of a grass pre, especially since the options are pretty limited post-emerge in conventional corn. Okay, so what Darren means specifically here with full rate of a grass pre is dual, outlook, harness, surpass, zidua, one of those group 15s at the maximum labeled rate for your soil and your soil type, you can just look on the label. The only choice you have post-emerge for grass is accent, that's it, and I would tell you accent's not that great. It's okay if the grass is at one to two inches tall, that's your only rescue. So in other words, you've got to be out there very early scouting to make sure that your pre did great, otherwise you have to follow with accent. Now we will get questions, people will say, well, I hear impact or loudest, or some of these herbicides are pretty good, especially when I throw it with a half pound of atrazine. Will these HPPDs do well on my grass? And my answer is always no. It's not gonna do that great on grass if you have a whole bunch of grass. A few blades here and there that are a half inch tall, sure, you can do okay on that. So I'm just trying to say here, you've got to focus on grass if you're going to conventional corn. And I would tell you, if you don't get a full rate of a straight grass killer down pre-emerge, you're doing yourself a disservice. You're going to end up losing yield on that conventional corn. Make sure you get that out early, and then hopefully you don't have a lot of grass escapes. Of course, with broadleaf control and conventional corn, it's not difficult at all. You can use products like Status or these HPPDs plus some atrazine if that's applicable in your crop rotation you'll do a great job on the broadleaves. So weed control, okay, that's one issue. The other issue that I'm really concerned about though, Brian, is insect control. First of all, if you don't have a corn rootworm BT hybrid, you've got to use an insecticide in furrow to try to control those bugs. Or T-band. Well, you can, it's, it's, there's, there's different ways you can like plant, but you have, to do yep. it, you have to do it planting time is what I should say. So a planting time corn rootworm insecticide because there's no rescue, post-emerge. The other bug, though, that doesn't get enough talk is the European corn borer. Now, I get it, there are other insects that can impact that, that corn late season, but corn borers are really growing in numbers in certain areas of the country, and not many people have scouted for corn borers for the last generation. Back in the 1990s, well, Brian and I would spend a good portion of the summer out looking in cornfields for egg masses and scouting for corn borers and these types of things to try to make sure we got the treatment done at the proper time. It's not just, well, I can spray a foliar insecticide. It's, I'm gonna put a foliar insecticide out within a few days. You've got a window of maybe a few days at best to do a good job on corn borer. And the problem is you're not gonna get that 100% control like you were seeing out of the BT trait. So I can just tell you on my farm, I'm not giving up that BT trait. In fact, I don't even like the refuge acres. We're losing yield on the refuge acres and that's only 5%. But you start figuring it out, uh, that makes a difference in my overall yield and profitability. So I don't even like the refuge acres. Anyway, for somebody who scouted literally hundreds of thousands of acres in my life, I can just tell you with that corn borer, if you don't get it extremely timely, you're going to go from 90% control to 60 or 70% control, so that's a big problem, and you're going to lose yield. Now the good news is insecticides are dirt cheap, so you can go out there with a pyrethroid and spray it two, three, four times during the summer and do a fairly decent job on European corn borer, the first generation, the second generation, but again, the BT is really the way to go because there I get 100% control and I don't have to make more trips across the field. With conventional corn, we, we mentioned a few management things that you can do. The other thing is just don't skimp on fertility. And I realize that a lot of the choices being made to go to conventional corn are just simply to save costs. Don't cut your fertility, otherwise you're gonna have weaker stalks, weaker roots, and if you do have any kind of insect pressure, it's just gonna be that much tougher for your corn to compete. You've got a lot of yield potential in the conventional hybrids. Most of those hybrids are just the same ones that are getting used in the traded products. They just haven't crossed the trait into them yet. So they've got really good yield potential for the most part. Just make sure you're feeding those crops in order to be successful. Yep, that's probably the last thing that I would leave you with too is yield potential in conventional corn is great. Just pick the right hybrid to fit on your ground and make sure you spread your risk, plant multiple hybrids, okay? But I'm just trying to say place hybrids based on your soils, your soil type, all that type of thing. And again, if it's me, I'm focused number one on weed control and then you also have to look at insects as well. And back to weed control, controlling weeds like our Weed of the Week is really critical. We'll show you how to do that coming up next.
The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Corteva AgriScience, Agriculture Division of Dow DuPont. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher. With unrivaled weed control. Reduced drift. And near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> Weed of the Week is Common Purslane. It's one of those opportunistic weeds that when you don't have crop canopy, it's gonna provide ground cover. So it'll start from a single stem and it'll just spread out and it'll have a great big mat that could be three foot in diameter or across that you're pulling out of one root system. It doesn't take much moisture to grow. It can handle a hot sun. You just have to have crop canopy. If you do that, that's it, Brian. We could be done right now with our weed of the week. Have great crop canopy in every square yep. foot of your fields and you won't have a purslane problem. Yeah, but where we see this a lot of times is right on the edges of fields, okay? So it might be fence line, it might be, uh, there's some grass there that you mow down, edge of a shelter belt, those types of things. So if you're in non-crop areas, we do like 2,4-D or dicamba if that works. Well, we like Freelex, not just any kind well, of 2,4-D, yeah. not, not the amine or ester, use Freelex, that would be your best choice. But here's the other thing that you mentioned there, Brian, on the edges of fields. If we don't get our pre-emerge herbicide applied perfectly out to the edge of our field, and the post. you'll see where those gaps are. And yep. most of the pre's do a pretty nice job if you're using our three pre program for soybeans or if you're using any of the corn pre's. I like Verdict the best for purslane control, but Sure Start, Triple Flex do a nice job too. Sharpen and wheat. If you spray them out to the edge of the field, you'll do a pretty nice job. In wheat, I'd probably go with Wide Match plus Affinity. In soybeans, if you're in conventional soybeans, Bassagran and Synchrony were our best options that we had before traits, which you can see why we went to the traded products. We like Liberty, we like products like Fexapan and Extend Soybeans, and of course Roundup will do a nice job too. Well that's it for our Weed of the Week common purse lane, but stay tuned, Iron Talk is coming up next. Your planter is the single most important piece of equipment on your farm, because without a uniform stand, you can't reach maximum yield. That's why Harvest International set out to design a planter that takes advantage of the newest innovations in planter technology. Built tough for high speed and integrated with the latest precision enhancements, Harvest International planters ensure every seed you plant today puts more in your bin at harvest. Harvest International, planting the future. Invisible, invasive, underestimated, nematodes are stealing over 10% of yields and current protection methods aren't enough. But a breakthrough seed treatment technology controls nematodes when they attack. Now offering Nemastrike technology. It provides broad spectrum control from the start and stays in the root zone as plants grow. Take back your bushels with Nemastrike technology. Strike where nematodes attack. Morton is eager to make the building you've always dreamed of a reality. Visit us online at mortonbuildings.com. Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing times. And how about the big man, Pro Germinator? Yeah, this guy's got some experience in the field. 
But look at the stats. You can't argue with those kind of results. You're right. I know a lot of teams wishing their phosphorus player had those kind of numbers. Right, but this guy's not just phosphorus. He's got the nitrogen, the potassium, the micros. All those just add up to his phosphorus game. And his game is good. What were the worst pest problems on your farm this year? And what can you do to stop them once and for all? Hi, I'm Darren Hefty with Ag PhD. On Monday, January 14th, on our farm near Baltic, South Dakota, we'll be holding a free Ag PhD Advanced Pest Management Workshop. We'll bring you the most in-depth coverage on how to scout for and control the pests that are keeping you from maximum yields. You'll learn the best ways to solve resistance issues, keep your fields cleaner both now and in the future, and improve your yields immediately with better pest management. Registration is now open at agphd.com. Next year, diesel will need to contain a 20% mix consisting of soybean and corn oil or other renewable resources in Minnesota. This is great news for farmers. I'm Bruce Vollen with Vollen Oil. For years, I've been telling farmers about the benefits of using biodiesel. It costs less, it's a product farmers grow, it is better for the environment, and it has a higher lubricity, which reduces wear. If you want to know more about the benefits of using biodiesel, give me a call at 529-5458. At Vollen Oil, we proudly deliver biodiesel. Make sure your farm equipment is season ready with an uptime inspection from your Titan Machinery service professionals. Titan Machinery's team of Case IH factory trained service technicians has the knowledge and experience to find, correct, and prevent mechanical issues that could shut you down during the season. Your planting and harvest windows are short. For genuine Case IH parts and service, schedule an off-season uptime inspection at Titan Machinery today. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We count it. Why? Because we designed the Tiger Mate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry and target a nickel size area to plant a seed and never miss, you'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on. Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. Last harvest was a challenge for farmers everywhere. When field and crop conditions were ready, getting things done quickly was the name of the game. My brother likes to say adding a grain cart to your operation is like adding another half a combine in the time savings your farm could enjoy. While I agree with that, some of the new features available on grain carts can make harvest a little easier and more fun too. I'll discuss that in today's Iron Talk. Getting things done at harvest requires working long hours. The improvements in lighting on grain carts have just been tremendous. Now the best carts coming out have LED lighting that makes it much easier and safer to see what you're doing. The reflective decal packages you can get are also critical to improving safety while you're traveling down the road. Unloading the grain has always fascinated me. Since I was a kid seeing carts that could unload in five minutes or less, the industry has focused on some new aspects for increased safety that are key. One of those that just came out from Demco is an unload auger height adjustment that can go anywhere from under 12 feet up to 15 feet and higher. This allows the operator full visibility of grain discharge. Figure in the adjustment spout design as well, and as an operator, you've never had better control while unloading. That also means there's no excuse for a spill, so be prepared for higher expectations from your coworkers. Also, the controls have never been better. An example is Demco's new one-touch auger auto-fold on the pendant grip control. We're working with a grain cart now that has a PTO-driven drivetrain. The gearbox includes two output PTO shafts, one for the horizontal drag auger and one for the vertical auger, and this has eliminated the pulleys and belts, which have always been troublesome. Other improvements of note include scale system upgrades to improve accuracy and even auto gate shutoff so you can program the cart to avoid overloading trucks. Electric or manual roll tarps are also becoming standard. Today's carts are also being built better to last longer and have less downtime with breakdowns or problems. So if you're looking to speed up harvest this year with a new grain cart, there are plenty of new features that will save you time and money and also make the job fun and safe. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. That's all the time we have for today's show, but before we go, we want to encourage you to tune into the Ag PhD radio show. We're on each weekday on Sirius XM channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.